In chapter 3, we will continue our discussion of functional groups in organic chemistry. In this chapter, we will concentrate on functional groups that contain heteroatoms, such as nitrogen and um, oxygen. So in this lecture, we will cover the classifications and nomenclature of alcohols, how to name alcohols using the IUPAC system. We will do the same for aldehydes and ketones. Okay, so let's look at some alcohols first. Here we have some samples of um, the structures of different alcohols. You will recognize methanol and of course ethanol. Here's another one, isopropanol, that's rubbing alcohol. Ethylene glycol, that's two alcohols. And propylene glycol, they're used as um, antifreeze um, in, in, in cars for the um, radiator in the winter. But let us concentrate now on the classification of alcohols. So alcohols are classified based on the carbon here to which the OH is bonded to. So look at this carbon. If this carbon has one, two, three hydrogen, it is a molecule that's known as methanol, of course. If this carbon here has one alkyl group, it's known as a primary alcohol. And the trend continues. If this carbon here has two functional groups here, it's a secondary alcohol. Did I say functional groups? Have two alkyl groups, pardon me. It's known as a secondary alcohol. And of course, as you can imagine here, if the carbon that contains the OH group has one, two, and three carbon containers, alkyl groups, then that alcohol is classified as a tertiary alcohol. You have some good examples in your tutorial questions, so look at that carefully in terms of applying this concept of classification of alcohols. Next, let us look at the naming of alcohols. First, you have to identify the functional group. So here is a functional group here with the OH. So if you are asked to name this molecule, given the IUPAC name, you identify the longest chain that contains that functional group. However, in this case, part, uh, the alcohol functionality takes priority over the other functional groups that we have looked at, such as the alkynes and the alkenes and even branching. So you do not start at the end closest to the branch, you start at the end closest to the OH group. So you can see here starting at this end, this is an incorrect numbering system, but this is the correct numbering system because this end is closer to the OH functional group. So this has six carbons, so the name of this alcohol will be based on a six carbon alkane. So you have six carbons, so you know six carbons will be hexane. So the alkane, let's look at the guideline, the alkane, the E of the alkane here is changed to OL. So the name of the compound, the alcohol here would not be hexane, but it would be hexanol. Okay. Of course, the OH could be on any of these carbons. So you'll have to indicate the position of this OL by a number. So this number here, 3, tells us that this OH here is on carbon number 3. So the IUPAC name for this molecule here is 
hyphen hexamel. Please do not forget your hyphen and your commas. I notice on the quiz, um, some of you guys missed that. We will be subtracting points on the exam, well, on the next quiz, and of course on the exam, if you miss those. Here's another molecule. This time the OH is on carbon number two. Of course, you know you will start numbering here for number one, because the OH is closer to this end than to the other end. So this OH is, this OH makes this an hexanol, because six carbons, and this OH is on carbon number two. So it becomes two hexanol. Let us look at branched alcohols. Of course, you, I hope you can see a systematic way here of naming um, the compounds. Once you have the numbering system, it becomes easy. So again, here's the branch. Well, this would make it the branch. But you do not start numbering at the branch because now the alcohol group here takes priority. So in this case, you start numbering closest to the OH, so you start here as one. Once you have this numbering sequence in, it's just a matter of naming the molecule based on those numbers. So let's see what that would be. So here, the numbering goes one, two, three, four, five, and six, so it becomes an hexanol. We have to indicate the position of the OL. It's on number three. And we have a methyl group here on carbon number five. So it's a 5-methyl, M-E-T-H-Y-L. Notice the hyphens here to separate numbers from letters. Here's another example. So this two here is to indicate the position of the OL. And of course, the four would indicate the position of the methyl group. Let us look at unsaturated alcohols. In other words, we have difunctional groups here, two functional groups that are present, the alcohol and the, the alkene. So here again, the OH will take priority over the alkene. So we have two functional groups, the alkene and the OH. But this takes priority, so you start numbering from this end closest to the OH. So once you have this numbering system, you can see that the root name here will be based on six carbons. It's going to be a hex, hexane. So let's see how we do that. So since it's an hexane, we know it's going to be an hexanol but we have to indicate the position of the OH. So we break up the word. We break it up and we say it's a 2 all and a 4 for the alkene. So this would be the EN, the alkene portion. So notice it's an alkene all. Okay, so in this case, it's a 4 hexene Notice the numbering goes in this direction here. So that's why this is 4 and this is 2. So it becomes 4 hexene 2 all. Let's look here at a branched unsaturation. Again, it seems repetitive, but hopefully you're getting a trend here. So again, you start numbering at this end here. Why? Because it's closest to the alcohol, which has priority over branching and over the alkene. So once you have this numbering system down for the longest chain, six carbons, you know it's going to be based on hexene, but it has an alcohol. So my suggestion is to write hexene and then modify it to get your, your solution. So here we go. So we have an 2 all. We got to break up the all because the 2 would suggest the OL. We have a double bond here on carbon number 2. So it's a 4 hex H E X E N. 
and we have here a methyl group on carbon number five so this is right here so again if we're involved you will see questions like this on thursday for your quiz and we're going to be grading it based on how precise you write this name or these names so don't forget the hyphens and the appropriate numbering you have to start with the group that has the highest priority okay let's look here at cyclic alcohols as you can imagine this carbon so you go determine the number of carbons in the ring five carbons so it's based on cyclopentane when you change that e to ol so it becomes cyclopentanol cyclohexanol and cycloheptanol here for seven carbons let us look at branching so if you have a six membered ring here and the OH is bonded to that ring this carbon gets number one because it's the highest priority as you can imagine since it's a ring you can go in either direction you can go this direction or you can go in that direction in this case you go in the direction of the branch so here's a branch so in this case this would be the correct numbering once you number it and i suggest whenever you name these molecules you put in your numbers you won't be um, points will not be subtracted for including numbers put in your numbers and then you just put on your groups based on the numbering notice three three we have to include a di for dichloro two chlorines on the cyclohexanol ring let us look here at cyclic um, um, branched alkenols or the sa unsaturated alcohol cyclic alcohols okay so again the alcohol functionality takes priority so identify that as number one here comes the trick do we go in this direction or do we go in this direction this time we go in the direction of the functional group here alkene because you may be seeing a priority trend now is that the alcohol has higher priority over the alkene over, and higher priority over the alkyne and over branching so you go in this direction so once you have your numbering system down it's just a matter of putting your substituents on the appropriate carbons 5,5-dichloro-2-hexenol notice this 2 here is for the enol we need not put one all because one is um is, is 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 it's expected okay it's assumed to be on carbon number one of course this would be an incorrect numbering system because you're going away from the alkene let us turn our attention now to another functional group this one is known as the aldehydes and ketones they all have this in common a carbon oxygen double bond also known as a carbonyl group so let's look at the variations it will vary basically based on the groups that are placed here so if you have two hydrogens that's a molecule and that's formaldehyde but it's possible to put one alkyl group or one carbon group here and keep this as hydrogen in that case it's a specific functional group here known as an aldehyde notice this entire group here is now the aldehyde including the hydrogen if there are two alkyl groups bonded to this carbon here it's called a ketone so look out for that so if this were a hydrogen it's an aldehyde but if it's not an hydrogen it is a ketone okay all right let's go on here so just some examples i want to give you guys here is um vanillin here notice it's an aldehyde functional group this is a ketone functional group um carbon spearmint flavor cinnamaldehyde main in uh, component in um in cinnamon this is an aldehyde and benzaldehyde is here as an aldehyde so make sure you can distinguish between an aldehyde 
and a ketone because they will have different names as you can imagine. Okay, let's see how we name aldehydes first. So in naming aldehydes, make sure you identify the aldehyde functional group. Notice it's a terminal functional group. It cannot be in the middle of the molecule. It's always at one end. Give it number one and determine the number of carbons in that chain. So as you can see, this is an incorrect numbering because number one is not the highest, uh, is not assigned to the highest priority functional group here, which is your aldehyde. Once you have that numbering system, the name will be based on five carbons, which would be a pentane. So let's see how we modify that name to get the name of an aldehyde. Okay, here we go. So you take your longest chain and base that on the alkane. The E goes to Al. So the E of the alkane goes to Al. Notice Al. So whenever you're asked to write alcohols and aldehydes, a slight difference here, an A versus an O, makes a totally different molecule. So here we have six carbons, hexane, so we change the E to an AL, so it will be hexanal. And that indicates that it's an aldehyde. Here's another aldehyde, five carbons, so it's a pentanal, AL, here. Make sure you write that legibly so we as graders can see that it's an A and not an O, if you intend it to be an aldehyde. Let us look at branching for aldehydes. So again, the systematic way is, once you have identified your longest chain, five carbons, just identify the groups that are bonded to that longest chain. Five carbons would be pentane, but you change that E to AL, you need that to indicate the position of that AL because it's number one and always will be number one if it's an AL. Then, of course, once you have these numbers here, it's going to be 3, 4, 3 for this and 4 for that. And notice dimethyl. Don't forget, on the quiz, I noticed some of you guys missed that di. You just put 3, 4 methyl pentanal or compound name. But make sure you put a di. We're going to subtract for that when we grade next time. And here's another example. Five carbons again, longest chain. This gets number one. Here's the aldehyde, pentanal. And of course, we have here ethyl on carbon number two. And since E comes before M, we put E first and, 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 and um, methyl next. Okay, so here we have a little exercise for you. Give the line angle structure for the compounds. So we need to be able to go from names to structure and also structure to names. So here is, you're given the name, so we need to put the structure here. So again, you need a systematic way to do that. We're solving problems here, so you need to apply the concept that we have learned. My suggestion is to start at the end here. So I would just put five carbons in a row and number these five carbons. And on the first carbon, I would put my aldehyde. And then, of course, on carbon 4 and on carbon 3, there are substituents. Same thing here. It turns out that this is 5 carbons again. It's an AL. So I'd, I'd put, on, on, on one of my carbons at the end, I'd put a carbon oxygen double bond and an H. And then, of course, on carbon 3 and on carbon 2, we have these substituents here. So let's see what we got. So here you go. So here we have... Um, five carbons, and if you number them, you can't go wrong. If you number them, you can't go wrong. So that would suggest the pentanal, and here's my aldehyde. Make sure you put that H. Um, and then on, on carbon number four is a methyl group, and on carbon number three is a chloral. Again, notice C comes before M, so that's why it's 3 chloro 4 methyl pentanal. Same here. This is the longest chain, numbered, and carbon number 3 is a group, and carbon 2 is a group, and of course C comes before E, 
So that's why we have that name. So once again, you will get questions like this on Thursday, going from structure to name, and given the name, give the structure. Make sure you are precise. I think that's the main thing about organic chemistry and science in, in general. It's a very precise discipline. You have to draw these molecules and write these molecules or the names of these molecules very accurately and see. Okay, let's look here at um, naming unsaturated aldehydes. So again, here's a molecule that we need to name. Terminal functional group is an aldehyde. So the numbering goes in this direction because the aldehyde takes priority over the um, alkene. So once you have this systematic numbering down, it's just a matter of how do you name it. So it now becomes an alkenal. Notice the AL is still there for the aldehyde. But now we change this A to an E. So this E here represents an alkene. So notice again, this E is for the alkene. Of course, that double bond could be anywhere in the molecule, so you have to indicate where it is. So let's see how this works. So we know it's a pentenal. The AL is at number one, so we need not put that in. The E here is for the alkene, so we have to indicate that by the number 3. And of course, on carbon number 4, here is a methyl group. So once again, you may want to just pause the video for a second and just make sure you get this and see. Let's see, I think I have another example here. Um, so let's look at this. Here is alkene, here's the aldehyde, start numbering here. So 1, 2, 3, pro P now, the E here is to represent the alkene, and the A here is for the aldehyde. And the E is on carbon number two. Same here. Four carbons, butenal, AL. Carbon number two is an alkene, so we have this two to represent that alkene, and of course we have this here. Here's another example. So this should be fairly straightforward. AL for the aldehyde, E for the alkene, methyl is on carbon number five, ethyl is on carbon number three. So you can see once you have this numbering system down, it becomes very easy to identify where these groups are. Let's look here at ketones. So now we're looking at ketones. Remember, ketones now are not terminal. They are in the middle of the molecule. And it could be anywhere in the middle of the molecule. So the numbering, we have to be very careful with the numbering. So let's look at this. This is the ketone right here because it has R groups here. Well, one R group here and all of this as your R group. So again, as you might suspect, we start numbering at the end closest to the carbonyl, or the ketone functionality here and not over here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's six carbons. So the root would be a hexane. Of course, we have to modify that name to reflect the structure of this alkene. Let's see how we do it. So here, we will have to indicate the position of the carbon-oxygen double bond, the alkene. Here, we'll also have to indicate that it's a ketone. So indicate that it's a ketone by changing the E of the alkane to O-N-E. So it becomes an alkanone. So here we go. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, hexane. We change the E to an own, O-N-E, we have to indicate where that double bond is, and this two is to indicate the position of that double bond, double bonded to oxygen, carbonyl functionality. Here's another molecule. So again, we can start at this end in numbering, or we can start at this end. 
but you can see this carbonyl here is closer to this end so this numbering system here is the correct numbering system so it's six carbons so it's hexane you change the e of hexane to o and e so it becomes own and you have to indicate where that own is the carbon oxygen double bond it's on carbon number three so this trick three is to indicate that. Notice again, it's separated by a hyphen. Let us look at some more examples. So here we got um, this molecule to name. And of course we start at this end because it's closest to the carbonyl. And once you have your numbering system in, it's easy to provide the name that corresponds to the uh, um, ketone. So this is a five carbon, so it's pentane, change that E to own. Pentanone, you have to indicate where that own is. It's on carbon number two, and on the methyl group is on carbon number four. Same here, butanone, four carbons. So that's own, ketone, you know that's a ketone. You know it's on carbon number two, and these groups are here. So these examples are here. So you can pause the video here and just um, make sure that you understand by working out these examples here. Let's go on. Here's an example of an unsaturated ketone. Of course, you probably can figure out how to do this now. Um, so the alkane now becomes alkenone. So that E is here to represent the alkene functionality and the ON is there to represent the carbon-oxygen double bond. But here's the problem though. The, since the carbonyl group can be anywhere in the molecule and you have to indicate its position, you'll have to break up the word. So it becomes pentene 2 own. So this 2 own here is to represent this 2 own. This carbon carbon double bond is right here or is suggested that this molecule has a carbon carbon double bond and this 3 here is to indicate that it's on carbon number 3. Of course, this 4 here is to indicate that this methyl group is on carbon number 4. So once again, you have to break up the word to indicate that the position, to indicate the position of the own. So let's break that up and put that number in. So it's a 2 own, a 3 own, or whatever own. And then the E indicates the position of that a double bond is present, the number prior to that um, name gives us the location of the double bond and of course just put in the other substituents. Let us look here now at cyclic ketones. Notice we could not do this for aldehydes because aldehydes are terminal functional groups. They're not in the middle of a molecule, but ketones can be. So here's our ketone. As you can su suspect, it gets number one. And of course, as you can imagine, you go in the direction of the branch. So it becomes a 3,3-cyclohexanone. Notice we're not going to put one own, because one is assumed to be understood that this own here is on carbon number one. Let us look at unsaturated cyclic ketones. This is carbon number one. The question is, do we go in this direction or do we go in this direction of the branch? And of course, as you can suspect here, we go in the direction of the double bond because that's next, that's higher in priority than branching. So the name now becomes cyclohexanone. Notice the own but we need that indicate one own because it's number one. And then it's a cyclohexene. So here's the E to indicate that this molecule has a double bond. And this two indicates the position of the E. 
and of course on carbon number five is a chlorine. So again, it's very involved and that's why we ask students to name molecules and that's why we give students the names of molecules and ask you to draw the molecules because you will have to put all of this information together to come up with a consistent name, the IUPAC name, so that chemists around the world can understand what you have written. So this is the last slide here for um, this um, first portion of chapter 3. I will post the next lecture video shortly, uh, b well, b probably by tomorrow, which will be on the last part of chapter 3. So look out for that. So again, read your book carefully and get your pen and really start practicing writing the names of these molecules. The tutorial questions are extremely good in terms of practicing writing the names and giving the structures for these molecules. Take your time to make sure you understand it because that will be on the quiz and definitely on the first exam which will be on the following week. So continue to study hard and um, look out for the next video which will be posted shortly. Okay? Bye.